one common Lord. We have a common faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be Believe the gospel. Believe him and believe what he is doing and what he has done. We have a common baptism. We have a common baptism. Now let me say this. He is not dealing with how many baptisms there are. He says one baptism. He's dealing with the commonality of why we should endeavor to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Why we should forbear one another. We have a common baptism. You say, I think there's more than one baptism. I think there's either six or seven baptisms mentioned in the scripture. It all depends on you narrow them out. I believe the baptism with the Holy Ghost and with fire is the same thing. So I just believe there's two parts of the same thing. So that might get us down to six. But I can tell you there's baptism with water, there's baptism, uh, uh, all kinds of different baptisms, and yeah. seven of them, if I, six or seven of them in our scripture. Yes, sir. I'm talking about the baptism with John and the baptism. Don't tell me one is about the numerics, it's about the commonality that all of those who are saints at Ephesus or are faithful in Christ Jesus are part of the same common baptism. We're baptized by one spirit into one body. Yes, sir. Commonality. We have some things in common. Yeah. A common God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Here you go. Now let me say this. The Mormons, the Muslims, the JWs, the Unitarians, the Buddhists, the Deists, the Atheists, the Pagans, and such don't have any commonality with Christianity. And I would say this, I'll go so far as to say any Romanist who believes Romanistic doctrine and the details of what it says and understands it does not have any commonality with Christianity. Because their doctrine is the church, the church, the church, and not the Christ, the Christ, the Christ. That is a difference. Yes, sir. But many of the old school Protestants, many of the Puritans in the, in the Baptist all have a commonality in the aforementioned things, the aforementioned areas. A commonality. The Scriptural Stearns, who was a great Baptist preacher of the 1700s, had the great Sandy Creek Revival in North Carolina that, that evangelized all of Western North Carolina. And if you've been to Western North Carolina, you'll find Baptist churches on every corner and two between each corner. I'm talking about lots of Baptist churches. And it says, she will stern. Became that great Baptist evangelist in North Carolina and planted all that, that church and had that great revival with over 120 Baptist preachers. Uh, uh, been out from there in a matter of, or in a matter of 120, in a matter of less than 20 years. I'm convinced in my heart that he believed that he had a commonality with George Whitfield. You say, why do you believe that? Because it was under George Whitfield's preaching that Shubal Stern came to know Christ. He didn't get saved because of non-Christian preaching. He got saved because a Christian preacher got up there and preached the Word of God with the power of the Holy Ghost. And that Christian preacher was not a Baptist. But there was a commonality amongst, the, amongst those that were in Christ. And let me say, Shubal Stearns went on to greater things. He decided he was going to go first class and became a Baptist. They got some things right. Baptism. Infant baptism is not right. The Methodists may do it. But can I say, that's not a common thing. The common baptism that we have is a baptism into Christ Himself, placed in Christ Jesus. When you think of this church, you ought to realize we have a commonality. And when you think of those who are in Christ, there is a commonality. 
That is why we should forbear one another in love and endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I did not say don't discuss the details of doctrine. I'm saying remember you have something in common. Remember you have something in common. And I said, I tell you this, I don't have much in common with this liberalism that's going on out there anymore. Most of the stuff that's gone liberal, they don't even believe in the same Christ. They believe in a salvation that is not a common salvation, a salvation where lives are changed. They believe, they, they believe in a salvation where all you got to do is one, two, three, repeat after me, say your little prayer and you're going to heaven. That's not Bible salvation. That's no. right. Bible salvation is the experience of the Holy Ghost moving inside of your heart and changing your life. You don't have to know a whole lot of Bible. Come on. All you've got to know is Jesus said, Jesus said, yeah. oh, Christ Jesus died for sinners. And boy, thank God, when I realized that I was a sinner and Christ Jesus died for me, oh, I fell on my face before God and I came up a new preacher. Christ Jesus. I didn't even know what the word repent was, but I know I did it now. Which had a word. I didn't know what the King James Bible was, but I knew who Jesus was. I, I thank God we have found out. But then there are complementaries. Look at verse number 7. Verse number 7 of chapter 4. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. In this congregation and within the whole body of Christ, there's given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody in this body has something to complement this body. And every child of God out there has something to complement the body of Christ. There is no part that is not needed. You'll notice that God has moved from commonalities to complementaries. Everyone has a gift. Everyone has a gift. He tells us for what? Well, he says in verse 16, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. The complementaries are something that you can supply that you can give the measure of every part, make the increase of the body and the edifying of itself in love. We can edify ourselves in love because of the fact that we forbear one another in love and endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's it. And when I get around the brethren, oh, I just talked about the tent crew just for a moment. Just for a moment. We've got uh, eight different Baptist churches here in the area, I believe, something like that. Hey, let me say, we don't always see eye to eye on every job and tip. We don't. But can I just tell it to you this way? We been we forbear one another in love and endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Why? Because we have commonalities. And we find that each one of us has complementaries. Each church supplies something. Well, I say, what do we supply as our church? Well, up until this year, we've been supplying the porta potties and trying to do a service without them. Well, that's where the biggest complaints came last year. All right, clean enough. It's getting hot out here and they're beginning to smell. You try to have dirty porta. That ain't going to make everybody happy. That's what that one. But you, you, you forbear one another in love and you endeavor to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Why? Because of the commonalities and because of the complementaries. There you go. There you go. Each part has a part. Yeah, man. Matter of fact, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm just going to read a few verses. <laughs> In verse number 4, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but as the same God works worketh all in all. 
But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Complimentaries. You'd not be able to get near as much done if you don't work together. There you go. Come on. Teamwork makes the dream work. Amen. If the team works together. If the team works together. If the team works together. That's right. Right. And if the team does not work, the only dream that happens is a nightmare. <laughs> That's true. That's really true. Every child Come on. has these realities. And every gathering of brethren for the cause of Christ find that this is true. Commonality and complementaries are for a common goal. Come on. To profit with all that the body might edify itself in love. If you and I ever want to understand how we ought to treat the brethren, hey, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That is why a pastor does not get up and say, here's what we're going to do. This is how we're having business this is what we're going to do if you don't like me. He doesn't do that. That's not forbearing. That's not endeavoring to keep you in his spirit and bond of peace. That's why I say, listen, if you have a problem with us doing the things the way we're thinking about doing them, let me know. Let's discuss it. Let's pray about it. Let's find out if God in it. Why? Just like this ceiling situation. Hey, we can pack it and go on for another few months until we have to do another. Or we can just bite the bullet and go on and get the whole thing filled. We can do either one if somebody has real issues. Why? Because we will bear one another in love and endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Why? Because we've all got something in common, and we've all got something in common. We be ready. I tell people that night might not be uh, good grammar, but it's good Bible. Matter of fact, it's great Bible. We be ready. Dear one, I just challenge you. You must, I must, we must be about our part. This. Let's do it. Let's do it. Perform their own.